In every online game, there is one thing that will upset players faster than anything else. Lag. The player thinks they're in one spot, the server says they're in another spot, and nothing works. And for the past few months, Noi was plagued with this very issue. Players would try to walk around only for the server to say, nope, and force the player backwards. Well, I'm here to tell you, I fixed it. At least I'm pretty sure I did. Hello everyone and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev we're talking about lag and maybe how I fixed it. So a quick tech lesson on how Noia works when it comes to lag. Every player has a run speed stat. Let's say this is three. This means that the player can move three tiles in one second. If the player client sees that the player is more than two times their speed stat away from where the server says they should be, they snap back to the location that the server says. This is called rubber banding. Here's the thing though, two times the player's speed is actually a lot of leeway. The good thing is it was only happening on one client, the web clients specifically. While I say that's good, Good, it's actually still really bad. See, years ago when I was brainstorming the concept of Noya, I wanted an MMO that would be available to bored office workers, hence the name, Noya. It means bored in Italian, not whatever you guys keep telling me it means. I wanted Noya to be available on as many platforms as possible, so having a web client for those bored office workers is pretty important to me. Compiling a debug version of a web client takes nearly an hour, so every single time I wanted to test something small, I had to recompile the entire thing for an hour. So troubleshooting this took a long time, and because of all of that extra debug bloat attached to the web client, the game ran at like one frame every four seconds. But I did notice something in the network graph of the profiler. These deep valleys of no activity followed by a giant spike. These areas of no activity coincided with periods of time when I was holding down a movement key on the keyboard. So that's weird. The client should be sending data while a movement key is being held, and instead it was sending nothing? I set up some additional debug lines in my code and find out that the client was actually sending data just fine. It wasn't receiving any data. Look at this. When I hold down a key, notice all the monsters on the map stop moving around? They still play animations, but all of their random fidgeting, it's all stopped. The moment I let the key go, they all continue. This is why the players were rubber banding so much. But it got weirder. Turns out, the problem happened when any key was being held down. This clip, I was holding B. B doesn't do anything in the game. So at this point, I was completely confused, and so I had to enlist some additional help from the developers of Mirror. Mirror is the network code that Noya relies on, and over the two week period we got nowhere. So I had a nuclear option here. I could start with a brand new clean build of UMMO and slowly add parts of Noia back onto it until it broke. So I really didn't want to do that. So one day I was fiddling around with a bunch of settings and I found the issue? It was one single option that made no sense. This one, VSync. VSync has nothing to do with sending or receiving network data. It's a graphics setting. It got enabled a long time ago when I enabled fancier graphics settings to help with some wavy lines that would appear on the ground sometimes, but for some reason, VSync specifically makes web clients stop thinking when a keyboard key is held. So if you had been trying to play Noia over the last couple of months and couldn't because you thought your connection was poor, it wasn't you. It was me! So I'm just gonna delete this little line here and good. Moving on to something a little bit more interesting, updates. <laughs> 
We have new eyes and face stuff in the cash shop thanks to Pixel Titan. Some of them are even dyeable. Look at these things. I'm not sure which one I like more, whether the alien invader or the fish face. Both pretty good, actually. And as usual, everything in the cash shop is free right now during alpha testing, so have fun. Another big art chain is, is the queen of the underworld now has her proper sprite, thanks to Mao. This cutscene with the player and the queen and Halya is looking great now. It still needs a little bit of work. It needs some spell effects for when the queen casts her spell on the player, but I'm working on it. Moving on, a suggestion by Be No Bread from Discord was added, a small change to the map. Party members will now appear on the map as blue dots, while the player will still appear as the standard little green dot. And finally, the deep forest map is coming along swimmingly. I got most of the big stuff added to the map. Giant trees, and canopy shadows, other little trees planted around, and a whole bunch of little minor stuff. But what I'm most proud of is this bridge effect. It was a lot of fun to figure out. Making a bridge you can cross over and under is tricky in a 2D game because there's no Z access. It's pretty doable in a single player game, but it is black magic in a 2D multiplayer game. I had to combine sprite masks, trigger areas, nav colliders, and sorting groups all to make this effect, but it works. Players can simultaneously go under and over the bridge all seamlessly at the same time. Moving on, Mr. Fox has been coming up with these really cool monster sprites for the deep forest, so I'm really excited for these to get animated. There won't be too many quests available in this map, but there will be a couple of bosses. I have the map divided up into three different parts, and each area will be a different variety of monsters. Monsters. Right now we have these kind of forest spirit jellyfish monsters that Mr. Fox is cooking up and I do have some ideas for some elemental type monsters like earth and stone and wood elementals. Players will be able to take parts from these slain monsters to these stone tablets around the map and summon the mini boss of that monster type. And each one of those mini bosses will also drop monster parts that can be used to summon the boss of the map. So keep an eye out for that in future updates. And that's it for this week. It has been an absolute crazy month with the two year in review video coming out and one of the worst bugs that Noya has ever seen, but we got through it and I'm still going strong. I wanna focus next week on adding more skills to the various weapons in Noya so that you guys have more of an understanding of how the classes are going to play out in the future. So I gotta get back to work. So I'll see you next time. Bye.